Another third period meltdown, another loss. Islanders losing streak hits five games. We'll tell you what went wrong, what they did a little bit better, and what has to happen next. Plus, we'll answer your mailbag questions. All that and more on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Your Locked On Islanders, your daily podcast on the New York Islanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome, everybody, to the Tuesday edition of the Locked On Islanders podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I want to thank everyone who makes Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts so you can get new episodes as soon as they drop. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150. If your team wins, visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get started. Well, we've got a lot to discuss, and most of it isn't pretty. But first, if there's something Islanders related on your mind, if you have a question, a comment, maybe a topic you'd like us to discuss on a future episode, Feel free to email us at LockedOnIslanders at gmail.com. And if you leave your first name and where you're from, we're happy to mention you on the show when we discuss whatever's on your mind. You could also follow the show on Twitter at LockedOnIsles. And you could follow me, Gil Martin, on Twitter at IceWars, N-Y-R-V-S-N-Y-I. We'll keep you up to date on all things Islanders all season long and I am live tweeting during nearly every Islanders home and road game. So join me for instant insight and analysis. And it's great to talk Isles hockey with my viewers and listeners game time or any time. Well, the losing streak has hit five Islanders fall to yes. The Edmonton Oilers by a final score of four to one. And again, you know, this game was not all bad and the Islanders actually played very solid hockey for the first 40 minutes of this game and then well it was sort of like deja vu all over again as Yogi Berra would say where in the third period things just fell apart and we're back to square one and it's unfortunate I mean there was some good news Adam Pellick Back in the lineup, Samuel Bolduc back as the seventh defenseman. The Islanders sat Matt Martin and Hudson Fashing. Julian Gauthier inserted into the lineup. Back into the lineup is Oliver Wallstrom. And so you think, okay, making some changes. Anders Lee moved down to the third line along with Pajot and Wallstrom. Holmstrom up on the top line. And then, of course, Gauthier slotted in with Sezikis and Clutterbuck on the fourth line. And so, you know, okay, little uh, line jiggering and, and, and trying to get something going. I get it. I understand it. But it didn't really do much. And, you know, the good news, let, let's start with the good news. There was some. Uh, Matthew Barzal scoring a goal just 40 seconds into the game. Of course, the problem is there's another 19 minutes and, uh, 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 excuse me, there, there's another 59 minutes and 20 seconds of hockey left to be played. And the Islanders could not score any goals after that. And, you know, they're going up against Stuart Skinner. And no offense to Stuart Skinner, but, you know, we discussed every day or no yesterday on the show. Uh, how badly the Oilers were struggling both defensively as a team and with their goaltending. And yet Stuart Skinner saves 97% of the shots taken against him by the New York Islanders. So the early goal was good. You're off to the one nothing lead and everything seems to be pretty exciting. And then of course, Leon Dreisaitl ties it late in the first period, and you go into the third period all even. 
were there other pieces of good news? How's this for good news? Through 40 minutes, the New York Islanders held the Edmonton Oilers to just 13 shots on goal. This is a team with Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl and Zach Hyman and Ryan Nugent Hopkins, uh, Darnell Nurse. I could go through this list of how good this team is, Edmonton team, offensively. And you held them to a grand total of 13 shots on goal through 40 minutes. I mean, that is the kind of hockey this Islanders team needs to play. And in fact, Brock Nelson had seven shots on goal through the first two periods. The entire Oilers team had 13. Nelson, by the way, finished the game with 10 shots on goal. Pierre Engvall added three. Kyle Palmieri added six. That means that that line had 19 out of the Islanders' 33 shots on goal. 19 of 33. Yeah. So where's the rest of the team? Anders Lee, one shot on goal. Bo Bo Horvat, one. J.G. Pajot, zero. Oliver Wallstrom, one. Zero shots on goal for Simon Holmstrom. I could go on. The defense really didn't step up and provide as much offense. And I think, again, that's what this team needs to do to be successful. Limit the opposition shots. Romanov had two shots on goal. Pelik, Mayfield, and Aho won. Guess who had none? Noah Dobson. Don't expect that. But again, my point, the Islanders for 40 minutes limited the Oilers to 13 shots. They took 20. Well, guess what? The third period was played the way the Oilers wanted to play. Islanders took 13 shots on goal in that third period, but they gave up 19. 19 shots in 20 minutes, and think about it, toward the end of the period, the Oilers weren't trying to score so much anymore until the Islanders had the empty net, and it was the same old, same old. Simon Holmstrom taking a bad tripping penalty. A minute and 10 seconds later, Ryan Polak, a bad delay of game penalty. The result, Zach Hyman a power play goal, Connor McDavid a power play goal. The McDavid goal was a little weird. Uh, Somehow squirted through Sorokin's pads. I thought he had it. I think a lot of people thought he had it. But bottom line, it wasn't Sorokin's fault that they lost. Okay, one of the three goals he gave up may have been a little, a bit of a soft goal. But this is the Edmonton Oilers, and you have got to find ways to put pucks in the back of the net. And this team just couldn't do it. And yeah, I know the Oilers were playing with a new coach. And so there's that energy boost and that excitement, the adrenaline rush that goes along with the coaching change. And and, and that's understandable. But you've got to finish. You've got to be able to finish. I mean, great. Brock Nelson, 10 shots on goal. Kyle Palmieri, six. But some of them have to go into the net. And this team still hasn't figured out how to play a 60-minute hockey game. And, you know, after the game, Lane Lambert, yeah, we're doing a lot of things well, but we're not getting the results. Well, what else is he going to say at this point? Five losses in a row, a very tough Vancouver Canucks team next on the schedule. That one Wednesday night. 10 o'clock Eastern time, but you know, it's not going to get that much easier from here. And this team needs to start to find itself because you, you look down this roster, too many players just not getting the job done offensively, especially, uh, there needs to be a real reckoning with this team. They need to, do you know if they play the way they played in the first 40 minutes for the whole game, they have a better chance of winning? But you got to give a 60 minute effort. This is a veteran team, they should know better than 
to think that they could win a game with a 40-minute effort. They didn't. They couldn't. They're not good enough to do that very often. And now the losing streak is five games. And you know what? The New York Islanders right now are one point ahead of the Columbus Blue Jackets. The Islanders are in seventh place in an eight-team division. And the Islanders do at least have a game in hand on Columbus. But, boy, they're a lot closer to the bottom than they are to the top right now. And it's not good. All right, we have got more to get to. We have our hero and goat of the game. And uh, we will also start to answer some of your mailbag questions. We've got a lot of them. And thank you very much for sending them in. We'll also have our Islanders birthday of the day. And this one's a little bit uh, obscure, but it's a defenseman who, you know, only played a handful of games with the Islanders over five seasons but was pretty productive at least when he did. So it's a defenseman who played with the Islanders in the late 90s and early 2000s. Let's see if you can guess who that is. We've got all that and a lot more coming up on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Jace Medical. We spend a lot of time talking together, you and I. We get fired up together on wins and losses, who starts and who sits. And I'm thankful for that connection we have. Well, today, I want our chat to be a little more personal. I just learned that you can get a one-year supply on ED medications. You realize what that means? Bring on extended travel. Bring on the next natural disaster or supply chain issue. You're covered, my friend. You don't have to worry about whether or not you can refill your generics for Cialis or Viagra, uh, your prescription. This is possible because of our friends at Jace Medical. Go online right now at jacemedical.com to receive your 12-month supply on your daily medication. Remember, use promo code Locked On at checkout for a discount as well. A verified customer had this to say about Jace. I'm thankful for this service. Supply chain issues caused me to cut pills in half to have it. I ordered most of my daily meds with a year's supply. I also ordered an antibiotic kit. I feel secure now. The prices are lower than my local pharmacy. I highly recommend this for everyone. If you or someone you love would get some peace of mind by having a year's supply of any daily med, go to jacemedical.com to see if it's offered for you. Remember, use promo code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. That's J-A-S-E medical.com. Hero and goat of the game. Hero is, yeah, not so easy. I'll go with the goal scorer. I'll go with Barzy. Brock Nelson would be a close second for his 10 shots on goal. But, you know, hard to to find much of a highlight beyond that first goal, other than the overall disciplined play that this team showed over the course of the first 40 minutes. As for the GOAT of the game, oh man, I, to me, the whole team in the third period just fell apart. And, you know, I could point to the penalties that Simon Holmstrom and Ryan Pollock took, and I can make them the GOATs of the game. But really, it's the fact that after 40 minutes, this team stopped playing. And here's what has me concerned right now, Islander fans. This team is behaving like a bad hockey team. What do I mean by that? With a bad hockey team, it's always something. And so, you know, the Islanders were playing too wide open uh, a style of hockey that doesn't fit their skill set. So they correct that for the first 40 minutes, but then they can't score at all. They get the one goal, like I said, 40 seconds in. Can't put the puck in the back of the net after that against one of the worst defensive teams. They did a better job of staying out of the penalty box, but when they did take penalties and they only, you know, had, what, three penalties in the, you know, in the whole game, but when they did take penalties, two power play goals given up. Uh, their goaltending is outstanding, but then the, uh, offense isn't good or the offense scores, but the defense gives up a lot of, you know, it's always something 
and you fix one thing and something else breaks down. And that's the mark of a struggling hockey team. Well, I'll keep the struggling label right now for this team. But the deeper we get into the season, the longer this losing streak or even, you know, this slump lasts, the more you start to think this team just flat out isn't good enough. And like we said yesterday, every dayers, the seat under Lane Lambert is going to get hotter with each passing loss. And even, you know, even if they win one game on this road trip, if they go one and three or one, two and one, you know, they've got to start winning some games, stringing together some wins to take the uh, pressure off. And something's got to change. And it may be a little bit more drastic than, oh, yeah, you know, we we, we have to uh, put in Julian Gauthier and bench Matt Martin. It, it, it's going to have to be more than that to get this team back on track because right now they're just playing inconsistent hockey. So let's see what we could do. All right, let's get to some of your mailbag questions. And uh, we have four of them to get to today. Uh, First one is from Joseph from Fort Worth, Texas, lifelong Isles fan. My question is regarding uh, JG Pajot. Will he ever get back to his old self? He needs to find the back of the net. It seems his goal scoring has declined since he joined the Isles back in 2019. What could be the reasons? Well, you're right. I mean, Pajot's goal scoring has definitely gone down since he joined the team. And again, I think Pajot has value beyond his goal scoring. he kills penalties. He's generally very good on faceoffs. He can be on your second power play unit, although this year I don't think he deserves to be on the power play unit. Right now, through 14 games, he has a grand total of no goals and five assists. So, you know, that's not very good. He is a minus six coming into the game against Edmonton last night. And, you know, he was even in that game, so he's still a minus six. But, again, the issue for me is that Pajot, maybe he's getting a little older. Maybe he's been dealing with injuries. But the bottom line is this has not been just, okay, the last 10 games or even half a season. He's been off offensively. I think we may have to accept the fact that J.G. Pajot – is no longer going to be a 20-goal guy or maybe not even a 15-goal guy. J.G. Pajot may very well end up being, you know, more of a 10 to 12. You know, last year he had 13 goals in 70 games, 18, 14. You know, those are sort of the numbers that he's putting together. And I think the, the, the time has come to accept the fact that J.G. Pajot is not going to be a big offensive contributor and that at $5 million a year, his contract is a little bit too high based on his production and role as of now. I like Pajot. I think he's a useful player, but I do think you're right. His offense has definitely declined. Uh, Next question is from Frank from North Patchogue. Thanks, as always, into all things Islanders. It's a great way to start my day. With the recent blown third period leads, it brings into question the physical conditioning of this team. Can this mostly over 30 team have enough gas in the tank to play a full 60 minutes of hockey? We remember when this team had trouble starting a game, they didn't look ready, and they get behind after a few minutes after the drop of the puck. Now it's the end of the game that's a problem. We see the lazy man penalties like hooking and holding when the guys can't keep up with a faster and younger opponent. This team did skate better on Saturday against the Capitals, but they couldn't finish. I would like to see a few of the younger Bridgeport Islanders get a shot to infuse some speed into that lineup. Sitting a few veterans could help. Well, Frank, 
thank you for the email and for the kind words about the podcast. I agree with you. I think it's time to shake up this lineup. I think some people have to sit. Uh, I would even sit Anders Lee, who is struggling mightily for a game to send a message to this team. You sit your captain. That's a wake-up call for everybody. But so far, Lane Lambert and Lula Morello have resisted that. Why not see what William Dufour or Ruslan Ishkakov can do to help spice things or Matthew Maggio spice things up a little bit for this team and really send a message to your players. All right, we've got more mailbag, plus we've got our Islanders' birthday of the day, so we have all that and more still to come on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Score early this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get on get in on the action. The app is super easy to use, and there's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and a lot more. Look, this is a great time of year. You've got the NBA, the NFL, college football, college basketball, and of course, you could use your knowledge of the NHL and the Islanders. Just go to the uh, FanDuel Sportsbook app and check out the latest odds on the Isles. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. So getting back to more of your questions, and this one comes from our friend Ben in Australia. Hey, Gil, huge fan of yours and the Islanders from down here in Australia. Your reporting makes following the Isles from so far away so much easier. Just wondering if you can provide any insight into why injuries are kept so private and quiet in the NHL. Players missing games and and weeks, and you never really know why. Has it always been this way? I know, for example, in other sports, it's usually dictated as to what the injury actually is, and therefore the time frames are usually clearer. Many thanks and hope to hear back from you. Cheers, mate, Ben in Melbourne. Ben, thank you so much for uh, watching and listening to the show. I appreciate that. And boy, to have a, uh, someone following the show from Australia is great. The NHL is deliberately ambiguous about injuries. They don't want you to know. And the rationale has been that if they knew, for example, that a player had a bad elbow or a bad shoulder or a bad knee, opponents would try to hit that player, check that player, uh, or take advantage of that player's injury and that could result in a longer injury if they try to play. So for that reason, and I'm not saying I agree with it, but that's the reason that the NHL is so different. You know, the NFL, for example, they're very meticulous and always have been about injuries. They give you, you know, a, a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday injury report. It says what part of the body, baseball, basketball, you know, they're always giving you the info, but hockey they don't like to do that. And it, it is frustrating. I remember one time the Islanders announced that a player had a body injury. They wouldn't even say upper or lower body, uh, as opposed to what a, 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 a uh, their feelings were hurt. I, I never understood that. But that is sort of the rationale that the NHL has. It's not just the Islanders. It is league-wide. And uh, I, I don't agree with it, but I... Yes, I understand what they're trying to do. So, Ben, I hope I uh, answered your question. And again, thank you so much uh, for following the podcast and rooting for the Islanders. And, uh, you know, keep the faith down under for all Islanders fans. One more. This one is from Joe. He did not say uh, where he was from. Gil, daily listener, and I've commented before, one thing that's been frustrating me lately more than the others is the disappointing play of our captain. I know they've had him out on both the third and first line, but I feel he's been a massive disappointment anywhere they put him. He doesn't use his size and plays so soft. 
I guess my question is, if he wasn't wearing a C, would he be benched as well? I can't see how Lane justifies him play, playing him over the likes of Wally and Fashing and Gautier or anyone for that matter. I would consider putting him on the fourth line, but he doesn't bring the energy that that line represents. What do we do with him? His salary uh, makes him untradeable. Ugh. Anyway, appreciate all you do and really enjoy the daily listen. Cheers, bud, Joe. Joe, thank you for the email. And I touched on this a little earlier in the show. I think they should bench Anders Lee right now because, A, he's not playing well. I mean, one goal and one assist in 14 games is not going to get the job done. He, right now, through 14 games, is a minus six on the season. He took a penalty uh, in this game that ended a power play three seconds in. He's not being physical. He's not producing uh, offensively. He's a little bit slow afoot. To me, you send the team a message by benching him. And and every day, you know, you'll know, I have said right now, I don't think he fits in on any line. So it, it's, it's an issue. This team needs to address it. And I think having him sit for a game or two would be a wake-up call for Lee a wake-up call for the rest of this team. And, you know, it couldn't hurt to have him sit for a couple of games, but will the Islanders do it? So I want to thank Joseph and Frank and Ben and Joe for your emails. And again, anyone who wants to send a question in or a comment, please email us at LockedOnIslanders at gmail.com. And we're happy to answer your questions as soon as possible. Time now for our Islanders birthday of the day. This is an obscure one, I will admit, but uh, today is the 47th birthday of former Islanders defenseman Ray Schultz, the native of Edmonton, Alberta, uh, an eighth round pick of the Ottawa Senators back in 1995, but made his NHL debut with the Isles in 97-98. Played 13 games, had one assist and 45 penalty minutes, and then just put together a string where he would spend a lot of time in the minors, but get called up when injuries hit or, or, you know, if he played particularly well. He ended up playing 45 games for the Islanders, stretched out over six seasons. Never played more than 13 games in any one season, and he ended up with four career assists, hung up his skates, after the 2005-2006 season, which he spent in the AHL as last year with the Isles was 0-2-0-3. We look back at one of his better games as an Islander, March 4th, 2000, at the Old Barn, the Nassau Veterans Memorial Coliseum. Islanders going up against Dominic Hasek and the Buffalo Sabres, Kevin Weeks, the goalie for the Islanders. And in this one, the Islanders end up with a 4-1 to win, Ray Schultz assisting on the, a 4-2 to win, excuse me, and Ray Schultz assisting on the fourth goal, which was scored by Dave Scatcher. That was his second goal of the game. Schultz was a plus one. He also had two penalty minutes and one shot on goal, only played 11 minutes and 41 seconds. So Ray Schultz, who was uh, only briefly an Islander, 45 games over five seasons, uh, uh, six seasons, excuse me, parts of six seasons. He is our Islanders' birthday of the day. I want to thank everyone for making Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. Every day is tomorrow on the show. We will preview the game against the Vancouver Canucks on Wednesday night. And, of course, we'll have our weekly farm report on all things Bridgeport Islanders. So make sure you join us for that. Until then, have a great day, everybody. Stay safe. And of course, let's go Islanders.